guys, my name is Jessie Mew and welcome back to Taito Ecology. We're back in our desert biome today to check up on all of those snakes that we placed in here and all of our rabbits and all of our mice, though it looks like the mice may be gone as well as our armadillos. I think our snakes actually cut through all of those creatures that we placed in here. The only survivors are these jackrabbits, which um, as you can see, even the jackrabbits didn't do very well. It looks like there's only, oh my gosh, only one adult and eight juveniles. So these snakes are very, very hungry apparently. I didn't realize that they would eat that much because the way we left it last time, the jackrabbits and the mice had just begun to reproduce and there were certainly a lot of a little baby jackrabbits dropping in. And I believe it was the same for the mice as well. Maybe not as many as the bunnies, but still quite a bit. So it's really surprising to see that they ate that many creatures. Um, it looks like the armadillos died off relatively recently, um, five weeks ago, so a little bit over a month. And six months did pass in this biome since the last time we were here. So I'm really surprised. That is a shock to me. These guys have just kind of like blown through our entire groups of little herbivores here. So I guess we're going to have to make sure this time that we add in more groups of, as much as I hate to say it, mice, <laughs> more groups of deer mice. Um, I'm not sure exactly how many we're going to add, not too many because I'm still a little bit leery after all of the trouble that we had in the grasslands. I don't want to risk adding in too many more, but it also seems as if these guys are the only ones who are still in the area, the king snakes. Now, I believe I had added in multiple groups of snakes, different types of snakes. We had um, the rattlesnake in here as well, the king snake, the rattlesnake, and maybe I didn't unlock that last snake yet. That could be. But I am surprised that the, um, the rattlesnake did not make it through the time that we were gone. It, it, unless their territory is invisible, maybe that could be the case. But I don't happen to see any slithering around in the sands at the moment. Just these guys, just these king snakes who are actually um, very hungry. Oh my goodness, I need to uh, take care of that. <laughs> I need to take care of that very quickly. I'm sorry, little guys, here I am yakking away and you guys are starving. Um, let's see, let's place some armadillos over here. Um, yeah, they have some insects to eat over here, okay. Just wanna make sure because we also want to sustain our armadillo population. We're not just dropping these in just for the sake of food here, just for our snakes. We wanna make sure that they will live happy and healthy lives for however long they have over here with um, all of these snakes slithering around. We have a ton of mushrooms though. I don't think we're uh, hurting for mushrooms at the moment. Oh my goodness. And a lot of carcasses over here too. Um, do we have any ants? Yeah, we have ants over here, which should be taking care of all of these carcasses, but maybe there's just too many for them to deal with? I'm not sure. It's a little bit worrying. Oh my goodness, there's just so many. Oh my goodness, from a distance, these guys kind of look like rattlesnakes, so I get a little bit excited whenever I see one, because back here, they kind of look like they could be that brown, tannish color that the rattlesnake is. When you zoom in, you see that they're actually black with those white stripes, the uh, king snake. But yeah, they are poisonous, or um, venomous, so not many creatures can actually eat them. And in fact, there's literally nothing in here right now that can eat those guys because we didn't place any more, um, I guess, larger predators in here that could munch on our snakes. We wanted to make sure that the mice and the rabbits would be under control. And they certainly were. <laughs> they certainly were, but I didn't exactly, uh, I didn't exactly think that the snakes would eat them all. So it's a little bit surprising, a little bit disappointing too, but we'll just have to work on it. We'll just have to see if we can make this place a little bit more balanced than we did before. So I guess I'll try placing the mice over here this time. Just one group of mice, just one group. I'm not going to go crazy and start adding in a whole bunch of different deer mice groups like I did in the grasslands because that is going to spell disaster. I don't think even our snakes could keep up with all of those. Um, it is worth noting that we only have two groups of snakes at the moment. Um, and this one, oh my goodness. So four snakes in this territory, 11 weeks left until they reproduce. And um, four in here, 16 weeks left until they reproduce. I don't think we've ever seen baby snakes before. I don't think any of our biomes have ever ever had baby snakes, so that's going to be quite interesting to see, especially um, with how hungry they apparently are. It's going to be interesting to see if our little biome here can uh, keep up with it. I think what I'll probably do is unlock zone two in this episode at least. 
Um, I'm not going to unlock the whole thing because <laughs> we do need to take this one step at a time, apparently. We do need to uh, find the right balance before we start just adding things in every single corner of the desert here. But right now, I think I'm going to drop in a couple more groups of ants if I can find them so that hopefully they can chip away at these carcasses because I also don't want the detritus levels to go out of control in the meantime while we're not here. We've had that happen before in the rainforest and that was not a fun time so we don't want that to happen here of all places. Um, and it looks like there's not much grass over here, so I do wonder if maybe the jackrabbits just, like, ate it all? I wonder if they were having trouble with a starvation issues. Does it happen to say uh, any of that? No, it doesn't look like it. It doesn't seem like any of them starved. They probably were just eaten by our snakes. That's what I would assume. So let's add a little bit of grass back over in this area so our uh, remaining bunnies can be nice and happy. Our six juveniles, oh my gosh, they are just ticking down away as fast as uh, <laughs> these little snakes can eat them. So I think that'll be enough of that grass over here. Um, we'll speed up the time a little bit to gather up those uh, impact points, of course. And I think I'll start unlocking some different types of plants. Um, oh, the desert spoon. Oh my gosh, look at that. That looks like something that definitely belongs here. So we're going to unlock that. There we go. That like spiny little uh, plant there. That definitely looks like it belongs here. And I think the snake thinks so too. He seems quite pleased that we place these over here. Something even better for him to hide in, I guess, while he is uh, stalking after these little rabbits. So we'll add a couple more of these over here, I think. How are the armadillos doing? Did those snakes eat any of them? Um, well, they're hungry. They're quite hungry. I think it's because there's not many insects in this area, actually. <laughs> so we might want to uh, fix that. We'll add some more ants over here. I believe the armadillos like the ants, so that should be okay. That should help them quite a bit. We have uh, moths that they can eat. We have the ants that they can eat. They can reach those, right? Yeah, of course they can reach those. They have basically this entire mound of sand over here, this little hill that they can wander around in. And they have the millipedes too. I wonder why they're not eating. Okay, there they go. They are actually eating now, so that's good. <laughs> because actually, honestly, there is plenty for them to come over here and munch on. So it would be a little bit strange if they decided to pass up on all of those insects. Actually, I think this entire zone is mostly insects at the moment. <laughs> Just looking at it, there's so many ants over here, there's moths everywhere, there's just one little lone group of millipedes, but they or two actually, two groups of millipedes, but they seem to be doing just fine. So nothing to worry about there. And there we go, jackrabbits, low population, of course. Not surprised to see that. Um, it looks like our juveniles may have actually grown up and then they were immediately eaten. <laughs> So that's too bad for them, but at least they're going to reproduce pretty soon. So hopefully they can hang on just long enough to keep themselves alive. And let's see, what else should we add into here? I feel like maybe another group of jackrabbits just to be safe. And then we can start working on um, the next zone over here. Or would it be this one? It might be this one that's going to be unlocked next. I think zone two typically doesn't have any water in it. So it looks like um that will be the next one that we're unlocking. And... Yeah, I think I will add in another group of jackrabbits just to be nice to these little guys, just to be safe and make sure that uh, they don't all die off at the awful jaws of our snakes, I guess. That's crazy. I do want to add those rattlesnakes back in, but I'm a little bit concerned to do it at this exact moment just because uh, they are so very, very hungry. So before we do that, we might as well unlock zone two. We'll go ahead and do that and then uh, take a look over here. We can start spreading around more different types of plants in this area. We'll get some grass in here first though. That's probably the best place to start. I do like to add um, the larger plants in first actually because it's very, very hard to like find a free spot to place in the larger trees when there's so much grass in the area. So we'll place some sagebrush down here, I think. Um, we have some up there and it looks like they actually spread. Oh my goodness, those tiny, tiny little bushes. Is that already in zone two? It almost looks like it might be in zone two. Did that spread like as soon as I purchased this? <laughs> that was uh, some interesting timing if that's so. But let's place some of these honey mesquite trees up here too on this little hill. That might be a good spot for those. 
something different to brighten up the area. And uh, how about this too? This has a little bit of fruit on it, so it might be good for some of the other uh, herbivores in here. It's a tiny little thing too. Look at those. Tiny little uh, fruit bushes. I'm not sure what you would call these living in the sand here. There we go. So that should be good. Hopefully something will be able to eat those. We'll place a couple more of these around here actually, just in case uh, that is the case and somebody really likes those, they might munch away at them. So there we go. And then we should probably put um, well, a little bit more grass in here so it has the chance to spread around once we place our moths in the area because we do want to make sure that all of this is being pollinated. So just a little bit more grass should do the trick. There we go. And basically in all the corners so that it has a proper chance to uh, really spread around. And then the joint fir too, because those are another plant that really looks like it belongs here. These little joint fir clusters. And are there any more like big trees that we should be placing in here? I mean, we have the cactuses. Oh, those look so cool. Oh my gosh, those look really cool. And the sweet acacia, the desert willow. Oh my gosh, that looks so cool too. Okay, I'm going to unlock the desert willow in this episode. We'll see what this looks like. How big is this going to be? Um, oh, it's tiny. <laughs> oh, I love the tiny trees. They are so cute. So tiny and cute. Oh my gosh, I love that one. Again, with like the twisty branches and stuff. Those are my favorites for some reason. Um, oh, that's not the desert willow. There we go. Clicking on the wrong one there. We can place a couple over here too, actually. <laughs> uh, I don't want our desert just to become like a big forest because that wouldn't make much sense, but I love the trees. They're so cute. There we go. Okay, so now we need to work on the decomposers over here. Place some mushrooms over here. We're certainly not suffering from mushrooms in the desert biome, but it's a good thing to place these in first because a lot of the creatures actually enjoy eating the mushrooms. So I like to make sure that there's plenty of them around in the area for them to munch on if they feel so inclined to do so. And then the millipedes too would probably be a good thing to add in here. Um, we'll get some more impact points and we will do just that. Place some millipedes over here. Two groups over here too. How about that? We'll place two groups of millipedes in all of these zones if we can remember to do so. Um, and I think that covers just about the entire area. I believe that does. There we go. So that should be just fine. I don't think we'll have to worry about detritus levels. We usually don't because I kind of go crazy placing so many of these mushrooms in the area. But I feel like it's probably just best to be safe. <laughs> safe rather than sorry in this situation. Um, and let's add some armadillos over here too. They might have a better chance over here than if they were over there anyway. So let's see, where would be the best location for them so they have plenty of insects to eat? I think that's the best question here. Maybe like right up here on this hill. Um, that's awfully close to the other armadillos, but they do have a pretty wide selection of insects right here. So I think I will go with that location, right like on the side of the hill, right on the slope. <laughs> They're going to drop in right here. I'm sorry, it's a bit of a wobbly landing for you guys, but I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. And hopefully they are on the move to go munch on something for a breakfast here. Or dinner maybe, actually. It's getting dark. <laughs> it's getting dark right now, so they would be on the move for dinner. They have quite a while to go before they can reproduce, so I guess that's probably why the um, other armadillos weren't able to survive through the entire six months, because they didn't have uh, the chance to reproduce. And these guys, oh, they're just barely cutting it here. Oh my gosh, I hope that juvenile is going to be all grown up by the time uh, reproduction is supposed to happen here, otherwise that won't be uh, the case. All of these carcasses too, this is crazy. What is going on here? <laughs> I don't know if our ants aren't really doing their job or if the snakes are just doing way too good of a job and they're leaving just a big path of destruction. Armadillos already at low population too, wow. Wow, just with two groups of snakes here, they are very, very hungry. That's all I can say about that, I guess. Um, yeah, they're already at four. Whoa, they ate literally half of this group of armadillos in just that short amount of time. That is crazy. Like, maybe ten minutes it took them to eat half of our armadillos? 
Oh my goodness. I mean, I know I have it on fast forward right now, so it is going to be happening at a faster rate anyway, but that just seems crazy to me. Well, let's see if there's anything else we can add in here to kind of like deter them <laughs> from that group in particular. Um, well, we do need, did we place any moths over here? Nope, we didn't place moths over here, so we do need to do that. That's not really going to help our uh, snake situation, but we do need to add in these little basic ingredients to our ecosystem. The moths in this area. Um, let's see, maybe one more over here that might help. We want to make sure our little willow tree is pollinated after all, so we'll just place a group of moths right next to them. And let's see, is there anything else? Um, honeybees! We haven't placed honeybees in here! Oh my gosh, maybe we should place some honeybees in here. I don't know if they would really help any of these situations, but the honeybees would be adorable to have right here by our trees. <laughs> there we go, they sprout a little tree of their own right here with like that hive on it where they live. Oh, that is adorable. And there's a hundred honeybees in that one hive, so plenty of bees for anyone who might be so inclined to uh, try to munch on them. I'm not sure who. Bees would be kind of a tricky thing to eat, I would imagine. Um, but I'm sure if anyone wants a little bit of honey, they could sneak over there and uh, try to grab them. Whoa! Okay, apparently the honeybees are not meant for this location over here. <laughs> I'm not sure, like, I don't think anything ate them because there's literally nothing in the area. But they just did not want to live there, I guess. Alrighty then, we will place them in a different location. Maybe by this tree instead? Maybe we need to make sure they're by a tree? I'm not sure. It's very, very strange though. There we go, that one stayed alive. That one is alive and well, so they can help pollinate these two trees right here, our honey mesquites, which should be very, very happy about that. And maybe we'll even get little baby honey mesquites in here too, little tiny juvenile honey mesquites. Is that what you would call them? <laughs> um, it looks like, no, okay. I thought this was a little uh, tiny one, but it's just a little branch that's sticking out at an awkward angle. Um, but it doesn't look like we have any juveniles or maybe we do. Oh, we do. We do have tiny baby little honey mesquites over here. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. These are so cute, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the carcasses! Honestly, you guys! Honestly, how many snakes do we really have in here? I mean, it's not that many, but they are just going crazy. Absolutely crazy. They're eating so fast. It's hard for ants to even keep up with them. It's crazy. I believe, um, oh, 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 that might be why. Oh my goodness, 20 baby snakes in here right now in just that territory what what on earth and there's gonna be 20 more in there too oh my goodness where are these baby snakes where are they are you a baby snake you look like a baby snake oh my gosh you guys this is not good this is not good. Oh my goodness. I was over there <laughs> setting up a new zone and this is what I come back to Oh my goodness, okay, I think it might be time to get the badgers in here because we know that the badgers can eat poisonous animals. So hopefully they will be able to like keep these guys under control. I know in the grasslands, the badgers tended to eat these snakes before anything else. At least that's kind of what I found. Um, they kind of enjoyed eating these guys. So hopefully these badgers will come in and save the day here. We need your help. <laughs> we really need your help, guys. We're enlisting you to munch on all of these little baby snakes. Are any of you going after these little snakes? You're all like sniffing the ground over here. Oh no, don't curl up to sleep. There's snakes everywhere, little guy. You need to help me. This guy's just slithering right past him. He's oblivious, completely oblivious. What about your friends? Are you helping? You're sleeping. Oh my gosh, sleeping on the job as soon as they get in here. Are you kidding me? Where did your friends go? There were four of these badgers, right? Well, there's one, there's one, there's one. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> and our jackrabbits are at low population. That's, is that our second group of jackrabbits? Actually, that is, that actually is, isn't it? Oh my goodness, um, this is not looking good for our little desert biome, is it? Oh my gosh, the armadillos are dead. Oh my goodness, here it goes guys, here it goes again. Well, the badgers should at least help once they finally wake up from their big long nap, they should help us out a little bit. 
and I'm thinking what I might do is add a group, um, I, I don't know if I want to add a group of jackrabbits over here without anything to munch on them, because they do reproduce very, very fast, and I do know that they can become an issue very quickly. The snakes, though, they, yeah, they won't be able to make it into zone two, so that might not be a good idea. But what I might do instead is place one of our cats over here, because the cats have a very large territory, so they could help in basically all of these zones. They could help make sure, they could monitor the situation here, and if there are a ton of snakes in the area, they should also be able to munch on them, though they're poisonous. Oh gosh, you guys, like, I can't believe I put all of these poisonous snakes in here. The bobcats, unfortunately, do not have the buff for eating poisonous animals. So that might be a problem. <laughs> that might be a problem. Um, wait a second. Am I reading this wrong? I am actually reading this wrong, guys. You're, the king snakes are not poisonous. It's, it's the rattlesnakes that are poisonous. These guys can eat poisonous life forms, but they are not poisonous themselves. Okay. Okay, I understand this now. Just like this uh, bobcat can only be eaten by a consumer with the eats tough buff, like the badger. Okay. I am slowly but surely getting there, guys. Sorry about that. So actually, the bobcat would be a very good thing to place in here because they would be able to help, help us out with the uh, king snake situation. So we'll put them right over here by this willow. Oh, this gorgeous willow that's actually blooming right now. Oh my goodness, look at you. You have beautiful little flowers on you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. This is going to be the bobcat tree over here, the bobcat willow. And uh, hopefully they will also be on the move for some meals over here. Though I see one of them has already curled up for a nap because apparently they drop in very, very sleepy. That seems to be the case in most situations. But the badgers at least should have woken up by now. It has been quite a while, though. Oh gosh, judging by this guy. <laughs> Maybe not. You guys are so lazy. What did I even bring you in here for? You're so lazy. Hopefully some of them are actually eating our snakes at the moment. It doesn't look like it though. This is awful, you guys. <laughs> This is awful. Well, I guess we're just gonna have to cross our fingers and hope at this point. I mean, I don't have much hope for our little herbivores. I have a feeling that they are probably going to suffer very, very much over the next six months. But we're going to keep a close eye on the snake situation. That's what we want to take a look at next time we're in the desert biome here. So hopefully these badgers will be able to help us out. Hopefully they will be enough to take over here, the, to take control of the desert biome again. We'll have to wait and see though. So thank you guys so much for watching today, and I will see you all next time. Bye!